Sometimes it's difficult to really appreciate the arrival of a new car, particularly a performance model, without first taking a look at the history books and borrowing a little bit of context. And I reckon the new F90 M5 is a case in point. This machine is an absolute rocket and it really takes the game forward in terms of safety, power and overall dynamics. But away from direct comparisons with its European rivals, the question remains, is the F90 really worthy of the M5 badge? There is no question, the M5 comes from terrific stock. And for mine, it was the original E34 M5, the very first one to land in this country, that really set a benchmark for the badge. And guess what? We've got one at our disposal. So today, we're gonna to put these two up for a little bit of sibling rivalry. We'll start back in the 1990s. Put simply, the E34 M5 helped shift BMW into a new performance paradigm. Employing a 3.5 litre straight six derived from the legendary M1, it blended silky smooth rear drive dynamics with new technologies including self-leveling rear suspension. This is one of those cars that really has to be seen in the skin to be appreciated. I mean, look at the way that the bonnet opens, the way that the wheel design actually promotes brake cooling or even the way that the doors thud shut. The E34 M5 was regarded as BMW's last hand-built car, and this particular example looks and feels special. This Alpine white E34 was only one of 14 such vehicles to arrive in Australia when it was registered in 1992. This particular car now belongs to BMW's own in-house heritage collection, having gone through a thorough once-over. In its day, the E34 set buyers back $168,000. First up, there's a real purity around the E34. I love that there's no unnecessary embellishments inside the cabin and nothing is too overcomplicated. It kind of goes back to simpler times. An example, the steering wheel. It's completely devoid of buttons and I'm quite comfortable with that. Now, 232 kilowatts, even by today's standards, is still a fairly respectable number. You're getting a 0 to 100 time of 6.3 seconds, though I don't know whether this one will emulate that 25 years on, it probably will. We drive sent to the rear wheels via a five speed manual transmission, and crucially, uh, it's a H pattern gearbox, and you've also got a 25% locking differential. The E34 harks back to a time when BMW was renowned for steering, feel and precision. And this one really stands up to its history. Despite all that, it is still poles apart from the new F90 M5. Twin turbo petrol V8, a dedicated drift mode as part of its all wheel drive software and the ability to automatically brake itself in the event of an emergency. There's some really impressive things about this latest F90 M5, and I've got no doubt that it does take the M5 badge forward overall. Now, withstanding all that power and grace, the incredible thing about this latest generation is that it is just a cinch to drive. At no point do you really feel as though you're gonna drop a wheel, put it out of place, and overall the refinement and poise of this car on the road compared with the earlier model is poles apart. Not only is the new M5 a dynamic show of brilliance, it epitomises modern day luxury with lavish displays, premium materials and swish styling. The car's 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 makes 441 kilowatts and 750 newton metres, sending drive to all four wheels via an eight speed automatic. Incredibly, 0 to 100 takes just 3.4 seconds, which comes back to the engine and transmission, but also that clever all-wheel drive system. It's safe to say the new F90 M5 is comprehensively faster, safer, and more dynamic than the old E34. And so it should be. The two are 25 years apart. It is also worthy of the M5 badge, even if it's not quite as organic as this original old Jigger. As for which one of these cars is likely to leave the biggest legacy, well, I think we're going to have to revisit in a couple of decades to truly answer that one.